Sky-Lian, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, so this week it is my favorite holiday. It is Halloween and I wanted to do a fun, simple, and super cute little Halloween trick-or-treat bucket or basket uh, for us this week. I'm going to take you through this every step of the way. Let's go over to our tabletops and we'll jump on in. Okay, jumping on in with our first step and I'm going to introduce the materials that we're going to use for today's painting as well. Uh, so I have a ruler today, just a basic school type ruler and I have a clear one, but yours doesn't have to be. And then I have my four standard brushes that I use in most of my classes. These guys just happen to come in a kit that have the right sizes, but what you need is the general size and shapes of these brushes. Uh, so this is a large square wash brush, a medium sized pointed sable brush, and then two small uh, detailed brushes. These are all round brushes and the sizes, this is a three quarter inch and then we have a size 10, a size three, and a size three over zero. I'm gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. The colors that we have to start with for today's background step, I just have some violet, AKA purple, some black and some white. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my ruler first because we're going to start with a really cute stripy background. And I'm going to use my second to smallest detail brush for this. And really simple to start, we're just gonna take some of our violet I'm going to add a pinch of white, just a little bit. I want it still pretty saturated, pretty vibrant purple. And I'm just going to work my way either from the top down or from the bottom up. Let's do top down since that's usually how we do things here. And you can see I was doing the practice painting before because I have purple in my <laughs> ruler here but we're just going to use our ruler to create lines all the way down. The stripes don't really need to be perfect because as we're filling things in that's going to be the step where we refine our straight lines but the ruler is very helpful for our stripy background. It would be way more difficult to try to wing this step, I think. And it's also okay if you're getting a little bit messy because we are going to cover this up entirely with purple and black. This is just like a sketch line, okay? But with a paintbrush, which I know is a little bit more challenging. It's good practice though, develop that dexterity. Uh, in my Gold Stars membership program for intermediate painters through YouTube memberships, I do teach with a pencil. So it's a little bit different and it is a little bit easier to hold a pencil. So I know the paintings are more challenging over there, but it is actually in some ways simpler when you use a pencil instead of a brush. I'm teaching you guys here the way that I learned in very casual, uh, sort of like one-off style, make and take studios, uh, where, we're, where we are really focusing on simplicity with the different materials, but the proper way to do it <laughs> would be to be uh, have a sketch beforehand. And this last section down here is a little bit wide, so I'm kind of scooting my ruler down a little bit, but you're gonna end up with however many stripes work for you. And then again, we can sort of refine things. Nice. Okay, and now we're just going to go ahead and start filling in. So I'm going to grab my larger brush for that to make things go a little bit faster. If you'd like to have a little bit more control, still working on that dexterity, feel free to use your medium sized brush instead. 
always go with a smaller brush if you are a beginner and you'd like a little bit more control. And I'm going to start with my purple stripes. And I'm going to take long, wide brush strokes all the way off the canvas. And of course, I'm going to alternate to create my stripy background. I have plenty of purple here. A little bit of white helps with the opacity there so that it's not too see-through. Some pigments are brighter and have better coverage power and some have less, depending on what they're made out of. If you need a refresher on color theory, I also have a course on color theory and it's available on Skillshare, but I'm also uploading it for the Gold Stars members. So if you're a member, then you'll have access to that too, so that everything will go a little bit more smoothly for you once you get painting. It's good to have a refresher in case it's been a while. Uh, color theory there, so with the color wheel and how to mix colors. Some people have never had it also, so it's an introductory 101 course on that. All right, moving right along, almost finished with our purple. Going pretty quick today. Remember that I know the channel is paint along with sky, but if you need to go a little bit slower, it's okay to pause. Use the digital format to your advantage. You can fast forward, pause, replay. You can also zoom in. All right, and then for the other stripes, I'm going to do a very dark gray. So just gonna bring a pinch of white over here. And that's not necessarily to increase the opacity uh, of the black because we have really good coverage power with black. It's actually so that when we do our little candy outlines later, we have some good contrast because otherwise it would be black on black. So as I'm saying that, I'm thinking I need a little bit more gray in there. So that we're going almost black, uh, off black. And again, I'm just using my largest brush for this. And one of the benefits of having the square brush is that you can use it wide like this, or you can turn it to the side and get a pretty clean line. And once we have our stripes touching, we don't want to see any white canvas anymore. So after this background part, after this background step, no white canvas, nice, smooth uh, places here where the colors meet. Okay. Looking good, going with the Halloween sort of witchy, witchy stocking uh, stripes. That's what I was inspired by. Your classic Halloween colors of purple and orange. Very pretty, almost complimentary. Blue and orange would be complimentary colors. Again, more on that in Color Theory 101. All right. Almost finished here with our background layer. And then it'll be time to take a quick break I always just step away from my canvas for a while. I had a question the other day as to if I use blow dryers and no, I do not. 
and have nevered. I actually don't even use a blow dryer on my hair. <laughs> so I don't think I even have one. But I like to not rush, take things easy. And it's also good to step away from your painting for a little bit and clear your head. So let's do that. Let's step away and let this dry fully. And then we'll come back and add our adorable trick or treat bucket and our candies. See everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background and a fresh piece of palette paper here with a whole bunch more colors. I have some black and white, a fair amount of cadmium orange, cadmium red and cadmium yellow, some more of my violet purple, a little bit of cobalt blue and a little bit of phthalo green. I rinsed my brushes. I've got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into it. And I'm going to grab my second to smallest detail brush. And before we start creating all of our candies and our adorable trick or treat basket, we are going to block everything out with white. So I'm going to load up my brush with some white paint and I'm going to jump right in with my trick or treat bucket. And I'm going to start by just creating an oval and then kind of working my way out from there. I always start a little bit smaller than I think I am going to end up. And then that way we can adjust things. And we are going to end up keeping the outermost sketch line. And I'm going to try to get it as even as I can and balanced. All right, that looks about right. Then I'm going to take my medium sized brush and fill in with that white. And as I fill in, I'm going to cover the sketch lines that I'm not going to use. I'm going to keep the outside sketch lines, outermost ones, and I'm also, I'm kind of getting that white on there, but then I'm going to start moving my brush in the direction that the pumpkin shape would go. Okay, so we don't just want to fill in all crazy like, all willy nilly. We want to go in the direction of the shape. Every little brush stroke matters. It all comes together as a sum of its parts. Okay, keeping that outermost sketch line and just a nice solid coat of white right now. Right. Looking good. This is going to help us quite a lot when we start to fill in our colors. Okay, I'm going to grab my smaller brush again, second to smallest, and I'm going to do a few more things with my white. So first off, I'm going to have a little handle and I'm going to just attach the handle to the top part of my bucket. The really simple, just white curved line. Okay, not too thick, that looks good. And then we are going to have it raining down candy as well, very cute. So let's do one little circle over here for a hard candy. And I'm going to have these little sort of triangular shapes coming off the side. And that will be for the wrapper. Okay, so I'm gonna do one on that side and then I'll come over here and do another one. 
And you can mix up what kind of candy you want to add. Whatever sounds good to you. Although the hard candies and the suckers and those kind of candies, while they may not be the trick-or-treater's favorite choice, as a painter, I will say they're a little easier to do. All right, super cute. I'm gonna do, just to kind of mix it up, I'm gonna do a little lollipop sucker down here. And our lollipop will also have a little bit of the frayed wrapper. And a straight line for the handle. Super cute. And then I'm gonna do one more candy up here. <clears throat> but I'm going to do like a Smarty. It's my inspiration here. Which hopefully I can say. I know I gotta be careful with copyright, but that was the inspiration. Okay, and then little frayed wrapper edges for that guy too. All right, looking good. All right, so now that we have everything filled out with white and blocked out and filled in, we are actually gonna let this dry one more time. Um, we're gonna be very patient here, which depending on where you live, for me, it's very dry here, so it should only be a few minutes. Um, but let's step away because I want this to be totally dry so that we can add our colors on top of our white and have it be nice and vibrant. So I'll see everyone in a few. If it's already dry, just go ahead and power on through. <laughs> Okay, artists, welcome back. We have a completely dry white layer. And we're ready for the fun part, which is to get some color on our white. So let's grab our medium-sized brushes. And I'm going to mix up a beautiful pumpkin color. And I'm going to just take my orange and bring over a little bit of yellow. And I had a tiny little pinch of red that I added and before we start to fill in I'm going to actually do a little curved line right there and then we're going to fill in everything below that and just like we did with our white we need to keep our brush strokes all going the same direction sort of curving out, so kind of in the center there, and then curving out around the shape either way. All right, and bring that right out to cover your white. If you go over the edge a little bit, you'll see why we did white first, because it would take multiple coats, probably my guess would be like four coats of orange to get it as vibrant on the purple and black background as it is on the white. So seems time consuming, but actually saves us time. All right, looking beautiful. Liking my little shape here. Trust the process, everybody. All right, so cute. I'm going to fill in my handle with the same orange color. Okay, and if you do go over the edge a tiny bit, you can always refine things a little bit later. So cute. Now for that inside little white part that we have still left over, I'm going to grab a smaller brush 
and I'm going to create a toned down orange. And to do that, I'm going to sneak in some black and a little bit of white. And as you can see, that makes it look almost greenish. To counteract that green, I'm going to bring in a little bit more red. And we should get a burnt orange brown color. And we're going to take this burnt orange into that little remaining white area, just like so. All right, pretty simple for our first layer of color. Covering the white right to the edge. Okay, great. Moving right along, going to fill in my candies now. And we are going to leave these outside little edge guys alone, leave them white, but you can choose whatever colors you like for your candies. I'm going to do a blue candy down here and I'm going to fill that in all the way to the outside edge, just in the circular part. And I went a little over into my white. So before I move on, I'm gonna take a little bit of white and just sneak that right up next to it. Do a quick little correction. Going to go up into the other corner here and do the same thing with some pink. So just red and white together. More on the red side for me, but you can make yours however you like. Okay. Base colors for uh, this lollipop down here. We're gonna do a little cute swirl. And your swirl can be whatever colors you like. I'm going to do green and pink. So I'm going to start with some phthalo green mixed with a little bit of white. And I'm gonna do a little curly cue. And then in the area that I've left out, I'm gonna grab some pink or whatever color you like and do that right in between. Okay, trying not to blend the two colors together because those are opposite colors. So they will blend to brown, which won't be so pretty on our lollipop but they look nice next to each other. So we're just gonna be very careful and just lay them on top of each other like so. Okay, and I'm gonna adjust my little white here really quick as well, since I can see through a little bit to the background and I don't want to. Okay, cute. For this top corner, I'm going to do a little rainbow. So I'm gonna start with some yellow and do a stripe right in the middle. Ooh. Touched my orange slightly, gotta be careful. Okay, so I have a little diagonal stripe. And then I'm going to take some orange right next to it on one side. I'll lay some red down right next to my orange. So this is sort of like the color of my little hard candy on the right. Vibrant 
pink, so red with just a little bit of white. Okay. Cute. And then right next to my yellow, I'm going to add some green, but my phthalo green has a little bit of blue tone in it. So I'm going to counteract that with a little bit of yellow. So I'll get a nice grassy green color. I'm going to lay that down right next to my yellow. Going with rainbow colors. I don't think Smarties are actually rainbow color. I tried not to look at any of the <laughs> candy wrappers so that I wouldn't accidentally copy them too much. So these are all off-brand fantasy candies. All right, and then a little bit of purple in that last little bit, and I'm going to go a touch lighter than my background purple. That was pretty much the same color. Let's go a little lighter. Okay, in that last little area. I'm now going to go around all four of those cute little candies uh, with some black and white highlights and shadows. And that's really what's going to pull everything together. So I'm going to take my black first. Make sure and leave your bucket alone right now because we are going to block out some more shapes with white in there in just a minute too. So we wanna make sure that's dry, but go ahead and let's load up our brush with black. I again have my second to smallest brush. And I'm going to do a circle around my circular candy shapes. And then in the little side areas, I'm going to also outline those but I'm going to do a little bit of a wiggly line here on the outside edge. And then also a few little brush strokes going in the direction of our little candy. And also a few little round brush strokes inside and then I'll also have just a little bit of white on my brush or a little highlight in those candies as well. You can see how that really makes it pop. And I think I'd like to sort of exaggerate the flare here just a tiny bit. So I'm just going to do a quick little adjustment there. All right. And for my upper right hand corner, it's the same candy, so I'm going to do the same exact steps. Okay, so outlining it with black first. I'm going to outline these shapes as well. Make sure you have a nice triangular shape there. A little bit of a wiggle on the end. And then little flicks of the wrist for a bunching of the wrapper there. Okay, and then once I've done my black, just grabbing some white for a few quick little highlights on the inside as well. So cute. All right, and then for our sucker and our smarty we're going to do something really similar so let's start by just outlining those shapes so starting up here with my smarty it's always satisfying to do a black outline you can sort of refine everything nicely 
So I'm going to outline that rectangular shape. As well as our little wrapper flare. Okay. If you go too heavy handed anywhere, you can always add some more white. And I'm going to do a little quick line through the smarty there, as well as a quick highlight. So I just rinsed my brush and I'm coming back with some white. I'm going to do a quick little white highlight. And how about one like that too? Sort of accentuate the shape of the candy there. And then our final little candy, super simple, very similar steps to our circular hard candy. Just outlining the shape with black. Little wiggles. Let's go ahead and outline the stick as well. And then tiny little flicks of the wrist. And we should also add a little bit of a highlight in our sucker. Like so. Very light handed with those little details. All right, and I think our bucket is ready for some shapes. So let's grab our white again, and we're going to block out some candy shapes, and then we'll work on our pumpkin face, and then we'll finish off our candies inside of our bucket. So I'm going to first do a little circle for another lollipop. Okay, and if you need a little bit more time to dry, that's okay too. This painting has lots of breaks, which wouldn't it be perfect if you had a little candy eaten break. <laughs> okay, and then I'll have the stick kind of going down into the bucket. And we'll have our little fray mark there, frayed edge of our wrapper. Okay, great. And these shapes might get a little confusing as you add them since they're going to be right next to each other and they're all going to be white. But I wanted to do like a chocolate bar. The good stuff. <laughs> Originally I had a few more chocolate bars in the first of this. I always do two versions of my paintings. Okay. So those are going to go right next to each other. I'm getting a little bit of my brown blending in and that's okay because this is just blocking out these shapes again so that we have a nice clean color. But I want to try to cover any beige that I might accidentally be blending. Okay, and then I wanted to do one more little hard candy. And a gummy worm. So I'm gonna do a little curved wormy shape <laughs> coming up and all around. I got a drip right where I was going with it anyway. So happy accident there. And then have my little wrapper sides. One will sort of be tucked into the bucket. And all of these shapes are going to make a lot more sense once we get them filled in with their colors. 
We're just blocking out. I had four shapes. They're in my bucket and lots more underneath probably. All right, candy worm, gummy worm, so fun. Let's go into our pumpkin now for a little bit and we will do our highlights and shadows there as well as our pumpkin face. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of black and start up top here and do a quick outline of my handle and this is a good opportunity if you went over the edge a little bit and it doesn't look as opaque as you want it you can cover that with the black with this step and we can take our black right along the edge here sort of boxing our candy in while we let our white layer dry just for a minute. And I'm going to outline my pumpkin in black as well. We can go ahead and just tackle that right now too. Home stretch here, folks. You've been working hard and I'm proud of you. If you are painting along with me today, I would love to see your work. And I've created a Facebook group called The Art Club where you guys can share your work, whether it be from painting along with me from one of my tutorials or just from your own imagination and creativity and home studio, wherever you're painting, whatever you're painting, I wanna see it. And that's free to join. And there's a link below for more information. Let's add a little bit of highlight into our pumpkin before we add our face. So I'm going to grab some yellow and I'm going to do just a few stripes of yellow to add a nice little secondary highlight color. But it's not just solid orange. So cute, I love the color of this pumpkin. And I think we can go ahead and tackle the face now as well. Okay, so only a few more parts, the face, and then we'll finish off our candies. A little bit of black uh, and some water together. So I'm gonna start with a triangle, pretty much right in the center of the face. And this triangle is going to be right side up with all three normal sides. And then from right underneath the triangle, we're going to have a little buck tooth V. And then we'll have a little flat but curved part. Flat but slightly curved up as we start to go up in the smile. And then another little buck tooth. And another little inch up. Not an inch though, probably like an eighth of an inch. But we're inching up as a verb. Okay, and then in these flat parts underneath here, I'm going to do teeth coming up in that direction. And this is like a jack-o'-lantern tutorial for us today too. Okay, and then we're just going to create a curve line to meet and then fill in our smiley toothy mouth. Super cute. I tried a few different jack-o'-lantern faces for this one, and I decided to go classic. This is the same face that's on my pumpkin cupcake from my spooky cupcakes tutorial from a few weeks ago. If you like the classic pumpkin look. 
All right, so cute. And then the eyes, actually these ones are a little bit different than my spooky cupcakes. I decided to do cute little eye cutouts for this one. So I'm going to have two triangles. And these ones are also going to be right side up. They're going to be at an angle. And then I'm going to do a little circle. Coming up in my triangle. And then I can go ahead and fill in the black. And refine my shape. This would be an appropriate time to use your tiniest brush if you would prefer. Okay, look at how cute he is. Love it. All right, and then let's take that same black and we'll do a few lines for the segments of the pumpkin. We want to go in the direction of the curve. We'll have some coming from the top and some from the bottom. And we're mostly leaving the face alone. So no big lines through it. A little bit of white for some highlight as well. I'm gonna take a quick swipe along the bottom and along either side. And right along the rim of the bucket as well. And I went a tiny bit over the edge here. So I'm gonna correct that real quick with some black. Look at how cute he is. I like it. Okay, final touches. All right, home stretch, everybody. Let's do some more candy colors. So I'm going to grab my green again, and I'm going to use the same bright green with added yellow that I use up in my little smarty guy. And I'm just gonna do a little Whirl there in my lollipop with green again. I think I'm going to do green and blue for this guy though. You could also just do one solid color if it's too challenging. Okay, let's grab some blue. Just going to use a nice vibrant blue. in the in-between space. Okay. And trying not to blend them together too much. So cute. For the chocolate bar, I kind of wanted to vaguely suggest a Kit Kat. So I'm gonna grab some red. And I'm just going to fill my rectangle in first with red. And then we'll add a few highlights and stuff on there in just a minute. That's going to be behind this little front hard candy. Okay. My hard candy, I think I'm going to do yellow. And you can totally customize this to however you'd like. So I'm going to have a circular shape. Just like so, and these are just the first colors. Let's do now our worm. So cute. I'm going to grab a little bit more green and go for a slightly more vibrant dark green. 
And I'm going to come here on my worm and add some stripes. And the stripes are going to go in the direction of the worm. Don't need to be perfect because we're going to outline things in black and that will help everything come together a little bit better. Okay, so I have my little stripey segments there. Then I'm going to grab some black and I'm going to fill in the other segments as well as outline it. But let's do the segments first. Okay, just patiently going in there, small little details make a big difference. These are gonna be sort of triangular shaped in some places. Okay, and then I'm gonna outline it as well. Super cute. All right, looking good. And we can go ahead and take that same black and outline our hard candy right next door. And it's hard to see now, but that little behind area would be where the wrapper is. So I'm just gonna kinda add a few little brush strokes over there to suggest that. And then I have a little triangular shape here where these shapes come together. I'm just gonna fill that in with black. I'm going to outline my not Kit Kat bar. My uh, tip tap bar. trying to do a knockoff name and do a little quick circle around my lollipop as well of course and a few little brush strokes there looking pretty cute let's grab some white and add a few highlights in. I'm gonna add a highlight on my lollipop, a highlight on my worm. And I should have done a little half circle in there with my hard candy too with black. So I'm just gonna add that real quick. And then a little highlight with white as well. And then for our tip tap bar, <laughs> I'm going to add some yellow and just do a few stripes here as if that was like part of the wrapper. And a little bit of white in my yellow should help the coverage power a little bit. Okay, but then we're going to add some black right next to it. And then sort of suggest a word and do a quick little additional rectangular outline there. And we could even have a little bit of a highlight on our chocolate bar as well. I think I'll do one more little coat of yellow. Oop, it's pulling it up. I need to have a lot of paint, a little bit of white. Right. Very cute. You can put any other little final details that your painting might need. But that is all the instruction that we have for today's tutorial. 
I would love to know what you thought of today's tutorial in the comment section below. And if you're ready to challenge yourself, this painting was a little tricky. So if you made it through, then I encourage you to go check out the Gold Stars program as well and take your paintings to the next level and learn how to paint from reference photos with sketching. And that's all the instruction that I have for us this week. So hope you enjoy. Happy Halloween. And until next time, stay creative.